so today's scripture, today's scripture, our first one comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and pension with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, Father God, here we are once again and we're going to ask you to, God, help us open our minds. Help us to just put away all those things that are rushing through our minds, all the things we need to do or all the things we're thinking about. And God, help us focus on your words this morning. Open our hearts so we can write these words on our heart. And God, most importantly, give us the strength to live out these words. Amen. So Paul, Paul, he tells us, pray in every situation. And then he goes on and he says, you know what? Don't just pray in every situation. Just, just pray without ceasing. Pray without stopping. So how is your prayer life? Are you like me and you need a Prayer refresh? Have we taken prayer for granted? It's there if we need it. It's there if we have time for it. Do we need to be reminded of how important the spiritual discipline of prayer, how important it is for us as followers of Jesus Christ. I mean, if we want to be like Jesus, and that's why we're all here, right? We, we want to be more like Jesus. We want to go out there and we want to reflect Jesus. Well, if we want to be more like Jesus, maybe we need to pray like Jesus. So for the Next couple of weeks, now not next week because I don't know what Pastor B is going to preach on, but it, it'll be good. But for the next couple of weeks, I want us to look at, well, how did Jesus pray? When did Jesus pray? What did he pray for? I want us to do a prayer refresh. It's through prayer that we have direct access to the creator of the universe. Now let that sink in for a minute. We have direct access. I mean, that's a big deal. I mean, if you've ever tried to get a live, a human custom, customer service representative on the line, that is a big deal. I mean, I feel like there's companies that they don't want us to have direct access because they make it too hard. You know, you got to push one for this and two for this. And then if you're like me, I've listened to all of the list, all the choices, and then I forgot which one I, I, I should push. So then I have to hang up and I have to start all over again. Direct access is so hard. But yet... Our God, our God gives his children direct access. 
We don't have to press one for this or two for this. He says, I'm here for you 24-7. I'm here for you 24-7. Where are you? He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never put you on hold. I'll never forsake you. There is not, there's not any circumstance that he will not be there. No matter how sunny the day, no matter how dark and stormy the night, he's there. He's there and he says, we can talk. I'll talk to you anytime. <clears throat> what a gift. What a gift it is to have prayer. Prayer is a gift. But have we lost, have we lost the sense of prayer as a gift? Do we pray like Jesus? When you read the Gospels, you find out that Jesus spent a lot of time in prayer. He constantly was praying. He modeled for us what it looks like to pray without ceasing. He integrated prayer into everything. He put a little bit of prayer here, a little bit of prayer there. He weaved it throughout his whole day. He prayed at his baptism. He prayed before he healed. He prayed after he healed. He prayed before he chose the disciples. He prayed for children. He prayed for adults. He, he prayed for the sick. He prayed for the physically sick, the spiritually sick. He prayed on the way to the cross. He prayed from the cross. It was through prayer that Jesus overcame every temptation. You remember that prayer he prayed in the garden? He said, not my will, your will. Prayer for Jesus wasn't a once a day or twice a day kind of thing. It was constant. He weaved prayer throughout his whole day. So why, why would Jesus give us this example of prayer? Why would Paul tell us to pray and never stop? Don't ever stop praying. Well, I think it's because they knew, they knew it's hard out there. I don't know if you've noticed, but it can be hard out there. There's brokenness, there's pain, there's tough stuff that's going on in this world and in our lives. Jesus taught us to never stop praying because he knew we needed him. That we need the presence of God throughout our whole day. We need the presence of God. We need the guidance of the Holy Spirit all day and into the night. We need God. So we need to pray like Jesus Pray continually without ceasing. Now in uh, Jesus' teachings on prayer, his example of prayer, he also taught us what prayer is not. And I think if we're going to do a refresh on our prayer life, we, we have to look at what prayer is not. So Jesus, he taught us that that prayer is not an occasional, momentary action. Prayer is something we weave throughout our day so we can experience the power and the peace and the joy of the Lord all day long, not just in the one or two times we pray, but there all day. 
Jesus, he clearly showed us that prayer, it's, it's not a formal presentation or a lecture. We don't have to impress God with our words. He just wants us to come to him and be real. There's no magic words that we have to say in our prayers so God will hear them or answer them. There's not one certain way that we have to sign off our prayers so it will be a legit prayer. He just wants us to be real. Another thing prayer is not, it's not our laundry list. It's not God's to-do list. <coughs> And I think we can all get in a, in a rut with our prayers. And before we know it, our prayers just become this long list. You know, we wake up in the morning and we say, Thank you, God, for this day. Now, here's my list. That Here's my wants and here's my needs for the day. And God, I'll check back with you right before I go to bed. And I'll check back and I'll let you know how you did on the list. That's not what prayer is. Prayer is not a negotiation. And we've all done this. You know, we pray, God, I will never cuss again if you will do this. Or God, I'll go to church every Sunday if you just do this. Prayer is not a negotiation. Jesus shows us what prayer is all about. Prayer is about recognizing our dependence on God. Prayer is recognizing our dependence on God. Prayer is admitting that, God, I can't do it on my own. God, I need you. God, I need your guidance in this situation. God, I need to lean on your understanding because I don't understand why. God, I need help. I need to choose your will, but God, I, I've been living my own will so long, I don't even know what your will is. Prayer is about Recognizing our need for God. Jesus prayed all the time. Now I can say, I think I've said it a couple times, well, you know what, I'd like to pray more, but I'm busy. i got things to do. But I think Jesus is telling us you don't have time not to pray. You don't have time not to pray. It's tough out there. John Wesley, he once wrote in one of his papers, he said, Nothing is more productive than time spent seeking the presence of God. Nothing in your day is more productive than spending time seeking the presence of God. Jesus gives us an example that prayer isn't just a momentary action. Prayer, it's a full-on Fully comprehensive, integrated conversation with God throughout our whole day. That's what prayer should be for us. You see, we shouldn't treat prayer like brushing our teeth. We shouldn't just pray once in the morning and once at night and maybe on an occasion, you know, we'll brush our teeth in the middle of the day if we have something stuck in our teeth. Jesus says, just pray all the time. Now Jesus also, he gave us an example of going by himself to pray. He did that quite often too. 
He would disconnect from the world around him and attach himself to the creator of the universe. He gave us that example that we need to take time and disconnect from the world and tether ourselves to the God that created you, that created all the people around you, and that created everything you see. That we need to disconnect from the world and connect to the one and only God. The only way we'll ever keep the joy of the Lord is to pray without stopping. To weave prayer like Jesus did through our whole day. Prayer is reclaiming a full-on dependence on our Lord. You want to get closer to God? Well, he's right there. Jesus showed us one way, one way to become closer to God is to just keep praying all day long. It's not a momentary action. It's an all-day action. And you might say, well, what am I going to pray about all day? Well, you pray about what you care about. You pray where you're hurting. You pray about your worries. You pray about what you hope for. You pray what's on your mind because whatever is on your mind is already on the heart of God. You tell Him what you're excited about. Tell Him what you're thankful about. You got questions, go to God and tell Him your questions. If you're mad at God, tell Him. He can handle it. If you're happy with God, tell Him that too. You see, God doesn't want just a little part of our life. He wants it all. He wants the joy, the pain, the stresses. He wants it all. And the way, the way we start this conversation with God where we share all of our life with him is just to start talking to him and never stop. Let it just be a conversation that keeps on going. Think about this. In spite of all the craziness in Jesus' life, he continually prayed. He continually prayed. So let us take advantage of this gift that our God has given us, this gift of direct <laughs> access to him. Let's not take it for granted and say, oh, if I have time, if I need it, I'll pray. He's there for me. Let's just take advantage of it and pray without ceasing. Let us recognize our dependence on God. We don't have to do it all on our own. God said, I'm here with you. Let me take it upon my shoulders. Prayer is about aligning our will with God's will. And as we do that, our, our hearts will change. You see, I think the, the more we talk to God, the more we'll hear His instructions. And lives will be changed. So if we want to be like Jesus, let's pray like Jesus. And Jesus says there's an open line of communication with God all day and all night. Let's take advantage of that. Let's tell God, you know what, God? I've tried to do it on my own, and it didn't go so well. So I'm going to try your way. I'm going to try Jesus' way, and I'm just going to be in conversation with you all day long. That's the way that Jesus said we should pray. And if it was good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. Amen.